Chief Architect has two separate tools used for creating photorealistic renderings. This video is the start of a series of videos that will discuss these tools in detail. In this video, we're going to take a look at these two types of ray tracing, CPU ray trace and GPU or real-time ray tracing. We'll discuss what their differences are and which settings are appropriate for each type. Ray tracing is a rendering technique that has more advanced options for mapping light, shadows, and reflections in a plan. As such, it helps us to create more photorealistic images of our homes. In later videos in this series, we'll discuss in more detail how we can use the lighting and materials to enhance these images. I'll begin today by opening up a finished plan, and then I'm going to take a camera view by selecting my camera tools here, then full camera, then clicking and dragging in my plan where I would like to look. This will open up a camera using our standard rendering technique. Then from this view, we'll choose one of our two ray trace options to improve the photorealism. The first type of ray trace tool that we have is our CPU ray trace. We call it this because the ray tracer relies on the central processing unit, or CPU, or processor for short, to produce these renderings. To begin this ray trace, you must be in a camera view as I am now, and you'll find the tool here in your architectural toolbar or under 3D CPU Ray Trace. We'll go through the configuration settings in a later video, but for right now, I'm going to accept the defaults and select Ray Trace to start the ray tracer. This will open up a new tab in my plan where the program is going to begin enhancing this image. At first, you'll see this checkered screen while it goes through the first pass of the image. Down in your status bar, you'll see what pass you're on and how much time has elapsed since you began the ray trace. The time per pass may vary depending upon your computer's processing capability as well as how detailed the plan is. I'm going to pause for a minute and let the ray tracer run. This plan we're working on now is a fairly detailed one so it's going to take a little over a minute per pass, although it is not uncommon for the ray tracer to take five to 10 minutes per pass on some machines or in some extremely detailed plans. The ray tracer will not time out, so if you let it, it will go to infinity. At some point, you'll decide when it's done. For exterior images, this is usually anywhere from 10 to 30 passes in. For interior images, you may want to let it go a little longer maybe closer to 50 passes, depending on how many reflected surfaces are in the scene. The first pass will be pretty grainy, and it will clear up as the image progresses. Again, you can pause the ray trace whenever you're done. There are image adjustments we can make, similar to photo editing, which we'll get into in later videos, so I'm not going to do so now. But this is not what our final image would look like. When you're finished, you'll export the image here to save it. One thing you may not have noticed in this ray trace is that this is a static image. If I click around this view, I cannot select any of the items. Essentially, Chief Architect has taken a snapshot of the camera view and pulled it into our static ray tracer. If I want to make any changes to the plan, I'll need to restart the ray trace to see it with the change. This is one of the reasons why we have another ray tracing tool. Our GPU ray tracer, which we also call a real-time ray trace, will photo enhance the image in real time. Back in the camera view, we can find it in our rendering techniques. One of our technique options is called physically based, and in parentheses you'll see ray trace. If you do not see ray trace listed in parentheses after the physically based, here in your technique options, it likely means one of two things. Either you are using a program prior to X13 when this tool was introduced, or your computer is not capable of handling the real-time ray trace option. The GPU ray trace, as the name suggests, relies on your graphics processing unit, otherwise known as a graphics card or a video card. This is a separate piece of hardware in your computer specifically designed to handle the graphics for programs like Chief Architect. To check if your computer is capable of handling GPU ray tracing, you can go to Edit, then Preferences, then Video Card Status. Here, it will tell you if your graphics card meets the system requirements and if it supports hardware ray tracing, which refers to our GPU real-time ray tracing. You can find a full list of our recommended system requirements for running Chief Architect, including our video card recommendations, 
on our website, chiefarchitect.com. So now I'm going to go back to our camera view. Again, we can select physically based GPU ray trace in our rendering technique options, and you'll see the image start to update. It also essentially goes through passes akin to the CPU ray trace to enhance the image, but it's all pretty instantaneous, so you'll see the image crisp up pretty quickly. And since this is a live model, we can still select items to make changes in the plan or move our camera around. Every time I make a change to the camera or any item in the program, you'll see your view refresh and the image will become more pixelated as it begins the ray trace process again. So typically we don't want to be actively designing in this view because the camera refresh would become cumbersome. But this is a great option for providing photorealistic renderings of interior views. So why do we have two ray trace options and when would we want to use each? Well, each ray trace tool has its advantages and things that it handles better than the other. The advantage of the real-time ray trace is obvious. It's faster, we're able to stay in the active plan and move around in it, make changes to it without having to completely restart the ray trace. We get real-time feedback on our design. But it was developed specifically to handle interior views. You can use it outside, but it will not produce as crisp and clear an image as the CPU ray trace will for exterior views. The CPU ray trace also has some image properties that the GPU ray trace does not, and can render all of the available material properties with any given material, including translucency and refraction within our glass, which the real-time ray trace cannot. Here's an example of exterior renderings using GPU and then CPU. And here's another using GPU and then CPU. So you can see that there's quite a difference. They also each handle light a little differently. The behind the scenes calculations are a bit different for each ray tracer and then can therefore produce different results. This comes down to preference. Some people prefer the way that the CPU ray trace handles interiors and some prefer the GPU ray trace. Personally, I use a combination of both for interior views. I'll start with the GPU or real time ray trace and then if I don't feel like I'm completely satisfied with the image, I'll try the CPU. For example, Here's an interior view using the GPU ray trace, and that same view using CPU. Both are photorealistic images, though you may prefer one style to another. As mentioned, this is the first of several videos on ray tracing, designed to help you produce the best images possible. The next video covers adjusting material properties, and applies to both types of ray trace. Then the following two videos cover lighting properties, and are divided one video for recommended settings for GPU, and one for CPU ray trace lighting. Then we'll cover the camera, technique, and image settings, again split for the two type of ray trace. Finally, we'll finish this series by discussing some general tips for creating better renderings. I would recommend watching all of them, even if you don't plan to use both types of ray trace, as together they'll give you a full scope and understanding of rendering within the software.